Hey, welcome to Comics from the Future. This is our show that we do every single Friday where you can take a look at the hottest, best, upcoming comic covers that we have compiled. And these are all open order, meaning that this is your time to definitely put in your pre-order so you can make sure to get what you want. Uh, but first, my name is Megan. I'm Andy. And I'm Jason. We're all with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yes, we are. So, like I said, we're about to show you everything we think is super cool coming up from Marvel, from DC, from independent publishers, and all that. So, be sure to let us know in the comments where you're watching from, what you're most excited about this week, and let's get into it. There's a lot of good comics to be excited about this week. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we're going to start out with Batman the Detective. Yes, another Batman series <laughs> from DC. Uh, we know, we know, lots of Batman from DC, but you know what? I got to read an advanced copy of this, and it was really, really good. It's written by Tom Taylor with art by Andy Kubert. So a lot of bad stuff has happened to Batman in his main series. Mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, Alfred died. Mm -hmm. That's not a spoiler anymore. Mm -hmm. That's, <laughs> That's ages like ago. two years ago, spoiler. Um, anyway, so he's still reeling from that. He feels like an outsider, even to the rest of the Bat family. A lot of, a lot of stuff's been aired against mm -hmm. how he has kind of been over the years, as good as he's been. Well, this begins with him deciding Gotham doesn't have anything for him. He's leaving. He doesn't know when he'll return. Where does he go? He goes over to Europe. They need his help on a case over there because something really bad has happened on, a, um, on an airplane. And the people who did it basically come out and say it's because of Batman. It's because of Bruce <laughs> Wayne. So he sees it as his chance. Get away from Gotham for a while. See if he can help out. This issue has some noteworthy things. We, we try not to spoil anything too much, but I do like to mention first appearances and mm -hmm. such. There is a first appearance of a new villainess. Mm -hmm. um, however, in my opinion, this is not confirmed, I think she's a character from the past mm -hmm. taking on a new mantle. Batman does run into Knight and Squire, for anyone who's fans of, mm -hmm. of those characters. And I will say there is a first appearance of a new Squire in this. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very cool issue. I'm a big Tom Taylor fan. Anytime he comes up, I'm always like, Tom Taylor, he's writing. Mm -hmm. It's so good. He's it's just so easy to read. But it really is good. By the end of the issue, um, you get the hook, which tells you why the villain is doing the things against Batman particularly. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that kind of blew me away. It's a really, really good hook. I can't reveal it. That's the most I can say. So I think you should check it out. There's some variant covers. Here is the Andy Kubert variant cover. And then we have the blank variant cover. Not so blank this Not time. Not so no. blank. Some bats. I like mm -hmm. these. Let me, what do you guys think about the blank covers that have a little something extra? Do you like that? You know, you remember the punchline one shot had her swords in it. Harley had like this pink leather looking thing. So, yeah. I feel, like like it gives, I feel like it gives an artist a little bit extra to work with like they can integrate some of it into their thing if they want to they don't have to they can just do right on top of it but i think it it kind of makes for um a little bit more personalized than just like a white cover that you could just do on a normal piece of paper yeah i like it a lot um i will say two more things i, I don't know if i mentioned this this is a six part series mm -hmm. so you know it's a new bat title it's you know six issues and it's done. I'd also say it seems like Tom Taylor and Andy Kubert are channeling a little bit of Frank Miller Batman. Mm. He's very big and lumbering in it. He thinks a lot about how he's kind of getting older. Mm. You know, he's not quite Dark Knight Returns old, yeah. but how he has to be more efficient. The the fighting in it is very brutal. Batman kind of realizes his uh, the people he's up going up against. They're younger and quicker. Mm. Uh, they did a really good job. It felt very homage to that time period. So I wanted to mention that for anyone who's a fan of The Dark Knight Returns, which cool. I'd assume is everybody. <laughs> but also, if people haven't read it, there's a Knight and Squire uh, miniseries by Paul Jenkins. If you want to know why there's going to be a new Squire in this, there's a whole story in that about um, who Knight and Squire are and everything that is not necessary reading probably to this, but if you like those characters, or you think they sound interesting, they're like a British Batman or Robin, but they dress like knights, definitely check that one out. Yeah, I mentioned it to Andy, and he was schooling me about them. So I, <laughs> I don't know, they're out. just cool, like, Grant Morrison made I, characters I hadn't I really like. got into them and, until I read this. So. Yeah. So next up is Challenge of the Super Sons. Uh, so this was released originally as a digital first, but this is now collected in single issues. 
Um, and this is by uh, Tomasi, who kind of did the uh, the original Super Sons. Has kind of been like the main voice for this young Jonathan Kent, mm -hmm. um, especially back in his uh, Superman run, where they really built this friendship up between Jonathan Kent and Damian Wayne. Well, this takes place kind of right after their last miniseries. Um, because, you know, now Jonathan Kent is like a teenager. He's like 16 to 18 or something. Back from the Legion. Yeah, but this takes place before that. And this is a really fun adventure. Um, I will say it's... There may be first appearances of characters in this that uh, could be could be a big deal um depending on what it is but it's kind of uh set up from these characters reading a story about um young superboy and robin so that's really cool but overall this is a really fun story there is a uh a mysterious figure that arrives and gives um robin and superboy this doom scroll or he sends them into another dimension, and when they come back, they have this doom scroll that uh, maybe like reveals someone who's going to die on it by showing maybe emblems of different Justice League characters. So it's really fun. It has that great um, back and forth between Jonathan and Damien that they have. You know, Damien thinks that he's the smartest, smartest person in the room yeah. or in the <laughs> world, and oh, Jonathan, you're you're too. <laughs> You're too naive. Let me show you the ropes. But of course, Jonathan is taller and stronger than him. It just has that great dynamic. So this is a lot of fun, especially if you kind of miss the uh, the younger dynamic of Superboy and all those adventures of the original Super Sons. Definitely recommend reading this. I just read this issue like an hour ago and thoroughly enjoyed it. So definitely check out Challenge of the Super Sons. I, I read this too, and the only thing I'll add is... They, there's also a new vehicle yes. in it that's kind of amusing. That, <laughs> that one of them kind of makes fun of. Uh -huh. But it's it's a fun reveal. And then we have the variant, and this is the uh, uh, Simone Di Mio, who is, of course, the artist on We Only Find Them When They're Dead, mm -hmm. and Future State Harley Quinn, such a good artist. Great colors and lighting on this one. Yeah, I was gonna say they always do that great lighting. Yeah, you know? that's that's what makes we only find them when they're dead so crazy is all the like crazy colors and lights. Mm. Okay, next up, another one kind of maybe targeted for all ages audience is Batman Scooby Doo Mysteries. This is gonna be a twelve part series. Definitely good if you are missing that Batman Adventures continues series. I think the similar crowd is gonna be interested in this. This is going to see Batman and the Scooby-Doo team, so Velma, Shaggy, everybody, is going to be in this. Um, each issue is going to feature a different mystery, a different problem that they have to solve. And the first one, for example, Batman's purple gloves have mysteriously disappeared, so they have to go back in time to the year one era and deal with all that. In issue two, someone breaks into the Batcave. How did they do that? So very lighthearted. Um, going to be a really fun read, I think, especially if you have nieces or nephews or yourself. You just you, There's a lot of darkness in comics and in the world. So sometimes you need something to lighten you up. What I love about this is looking at DC's new Indicia. And I, I may have uh, only noticed this here, but it says limited series up there. This is a 12-part series, and it lets you know that on the actual comic. That's really interesting to me. I like that they're doing that. Also, you may notice, this is only $2.99. Wow. So, I know a lot of people have been confused, upset, curious about the price increase of some of DC's books, but this is, you know, back to some of the cheapest comics you can buy, $2.99, mm -hmm. and I love that because I think a lot of younger audiences are going to read, want to read this. And I love that it's more accessible to them. So just the one cover on these is going to be a 12-part series. And it looks really cool. I hope they go back to Dark Knight Returns. I want to see Dark Knight Returns Scooby and Shaggy, <laughs> who are just like hunched over and brooding. That would be hilarious. <laughs> I, I watched uh, Scooby-Doo. You know, it was in reruns when I was yeah. a kid. But I watched all the ones where they met Don Knotts. And oh, yeah. I, I, I read an advanced copy of this, and it channels that. So if you like that, you will like this. Or if you want to pass on to somebody younger than you that feeling you kind of get that feeling like right off the bat 
uh, you know, Scooby's goofing around in front of the bat signal, mm. so you get the Scooby signal. It's that, it's that <laughs> yeah. sort of humor. Like, I laughed right when I saw that. Yeah, that's great. So, Okay, next up from Marvel. It is Dark Hawk, Heart of the Hawk. This so is so hard to say. Dark Hawk, Dark Hawk, Hawk. Hawk, Heart of the Hawk. Number one. This is a one shot. It is celebrating Dark Hawk's thirtieth anniversary. Wow. Yep. Who so knew? That that means I am thirty one years old because I started reading Dark Hawk at one. Oh. No. Um. But yeah, it's weird seeing things I read when I first got into comics mm -hmm. hit it, their thirtieth anniversary. So this is pretty cool. I, I like that you know they're like let's let's put some Dark Hawk out, but let's not do like some big series. Let's mm -hmm. do a, a well made one shot. So the, it has a few stories in it. The first one is a classic tale back from the early days of Dark Hawk. It's not a reprint. It's a new story, but it's by the original creators. Then there is a story from the time period when Dark Hawk is in his sort of cosmic years, because mm -hmm. eventually it's found out that. His uh, gem is an Infinity Gem. And after that, he kind of becomes a cosmic character yeah. for a while. So there's a story about that, brand new story. And then lastly, it is teased that it's going to have a story about the future of Dark Hawk. And he's a property that Marvel, they lately, they trademarked his number one, yeah. went up in value. Everyone's been buying it. It seems like they have something in store for him. And I, I think anyone that's related to any Infinity Gem they're just going to pump that up because yeah. everybody likes that stuff. Yep. So, um, so that's pretty much the skinny on that. Here is the Dodderman variant. That one's really cool. Very 90s. Love you it. Got, you got your brick wall <laughs> that somebody's done graffiti on. Yeah. He did it. That's and, one of his other powers. He can really replicate his name well on Half of paint. the battles in the 90s took place in alleyways. <laughs> the other half were in space. Mm -hmm. Jim Valentino was writing them. And then here is the Lubera variant. Let's see if it's a more cosmic one now. Next up, speaking of cosmic, yeah. it's Guardians of the Galaxy. But this is not a number one, even though it kind of feels like it. This is Guardians of the Galaxy number 13. Uh, this is still by Al Ewing. But... Uh, this is definitely a whole new direction for the Guardians. Um, you do still have your classic members in there, like Star-Lord and Groot. Um, you have Gamora. Uh, you don't have Drax. He, Drax is kind of MIA right now. But along with them come some brand new ones. You have Wiccan and Hulkling joining. You have uh, the original Quasar. And you even have Doctor Doom joining the Guardians of the Galaxy. How they convinced him to get on a rocket, uh, I don't know. But this seems really cool because uh, Al Ewing described this as definitely a more superhero team tone for um, the Guardians more than they've ever done. You can kind of see they've got matching costumes. Um, and he said you know, over 2020 that everything was so dark and everything that the, uh, he was always planning this art for Guardians of the Galaxy, but he actually decided to take it a little bit lighter. So this seems like it's going to be a really fun, action-y, maybe a little bit more superhero-y take on the Guardians of the Galaxy. And it starts in issue 13, which um, from what it sounds like, this is going to be basically the new status quo jumping on point and everything. Cool. Um, for this issue and like the next two, you have like all the new team members on the covers too. So I think it's really cool, um, especially with Wiccan and Hulkling. You're probably going to be picking up on some of the threads left in Empire that right. you know were kind of kind of left there about what the uh, the scrolls are currently doing. Um, even I believe Super Scroll is on the team. Super Scroll is on the team. Uh, I think he's on one of the later covers, which is enough to be like. Doctor Doom and Super Scroll on a team. I just want to see a conversation between they, those they two. They have a lot of members. They're turning into sort of an Avengers. Here. Yeah, yeah. They they kind of compared it to like if you have the X Men and then you have um, Sword, which is like their space. Um, this is the Avengers version of Sword. So it's like the the space arm of the Avengers, which I think sounds really cool. Um, so yeah, definitely want to check this out. This is Guardians of the Galaxy issue number thirteen. I'm also kind of happy. It seems like Marvel and DC aren't just doing new number ones. Like they're mm -hmm. like, "Hey, new team, new jumping on point." You it's know, definitely back to how comics keep the, the used numbers. to be. Like yeah. I always tell people, you know, when they ask what's a good jumping on point, I always said like, "Well, when I started reading, I just went in the store and 
said, oh, that cover looks really cool. I didn't necessarily know what was going on, but after you read two or three issues, you start to pick up on it and you discover characters you like and everything. So I don't think you need a number one to uh, get into a book, and I think this is great. It helps us comic stores organize. Like the year where they released <laughs> three Squirrel Girl number ones, yeah, that was that was Still, tough organizing that. Uh, three years later, which which series? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then we have, I believe this is the Ron Lim variant. Yep, so you see some more of the, uh, you got Nova on the team. You got Super Scroll in the background, Quasar. Um, just some crazy, like, they're pulling out. If you've been a cosmic character, you're on this team. Like, sorry, you're just automatically recruited. They send you a card in the mail. And then you have the Rob Liefeld variant, which... Uh, <laughs> Very interesting if this is life-size. That Groot is like King Kong. Wow. I was about to say for a second, did Deadpool join the team? But no, it's just... I mean, don't put it past him. I could see Deadpool joining the team at some point. I don't think no. they would, you know, officially let him on. He would just He would just appear up. in space. He'd just be floating by and they'd tractor beam him in. And then uh, this is, which we'll be going over some more of these later. These are the Reborn variants, which are... Um, kind of the precursor to the new um, Heroes Reborn storyline they're going to be doing coming up. But these are kind of in that Reborn storyline in the future what characters are if the Avengers never existed. So in this one, uh, Rocket Raccoon has Groot as a big gun. And Whoa. I think that is a great idea. Hopefully they actually use this in some capacity. But yeah, this is a super cool uh, variant cover. That's interesting. Okay, this sounds awesome. This is Spider-Man, Spider's Shadow. It is a new four-part miniseries, but when you hear the premise, you're going to wish it was longer. So what if Peter Parker, i say this exactly right, what if he, he kept the alien symbiote? What if he became Venom? So as you know, he wore the suit, but he took it off. His, his good nature, you know, prevailed, <laughs> but... That's not what happens in this What If tale, and this is written by Chip Zdarsky. Uh, what if he kept it? And I think the spider shadow is going to, you know, it's just symbolizing a darker theme. Maybe we get to see just more of what's tormenting him, and just him as a darker character. Um, so it's, it's really unique. I think this is going to be really cool, a great read. Chip Zdarsky's a great writer, so yeah, just a really simple, pretty simple premise, honestly, but uh, it seems pretty cool. So let's see, what, what covers do we have? So this is the fairy variant, and you can kind of see just either throw, throwing off the uh, regular Spider-Man suit and some tendrils. Or merging with Or merging. Yeah, yeah they, embracing both. This is such a strong idea. I'm surprised they're only doing a four-parter on I it. Know. I mean, I think mm -hmm. everybody's going to jump on going to read this. I, yeah. And this cover is by Pascal Ferry, who is going to be the ongoing artist of the series. And then we have the Ron Lim variant. Ron so, Lim is just getting all the work. I know. He really is, but he deserves it. His yeah. His covers are so good. That's yeah, awesome. So, yeah, I, I think this is going to be great. I have very high hopes for it, and I, I'm sad that it's only going to be four issues, actually, but it's, it's you know, sometimes the best stories are just mm -hmm. the simplest ones. Well, it's so. cool, too, because Chip Zardinsky, they uh, gave him um, Spider-Man Life Story. Uh -huh. which was very similar to like this like Elseworld version of Spider-Man. So he's really good at writing those self-contained, um, like mm -hmm. big idea books. I think this is going to be one of those. All right, so here's an interesting one from Image Comics. It is Jewel Verne's Lighthouse. So I guess this Jewel Verne's must be a new writer to comics or something. I've <laughs> yeah. never, never heard of him in, in his comics now. I, I joke, I joke, but... This sounds pretty cool. So it's based off of a Jewel Verne's work. Of course, he's the one who wrote 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Mm -hmm. He wrote Around the World in 80 Days. Um, just all kinds of great old sci-fi. But he's one of the, the precursors mm -hmm. of sci-fi writing. So they're taking some of his work, they're playing off of it, and um, making a comic series. So what is it about? What is The Lighthouse? The Lighthouse is a space station with a supercomputer, I think actually the supercomputer is called the Lighthouse, mm -hmm. and it is the only supercomputer that they can build that is strong enough to help ships navigate through the only wormhole they've discovered. Mm -hmm. So it isn't as simple as just you go through the wormhole, you're there. You need this Lighthouse computer to get you through. Obviously, that makes it extremely valuable. It's the only one. There's no other wormholes. 
So pretty much if you control the lighthouse, you control the galaxy. Mm. Well, what happens when these evil sort of pirate guys show up trying to take it over? Well, the captain of the lighthouse and the crew have to defend against these people, but a lot of uh, secrets and a lot of sort of secret alliances kind of are, are unearthed. Mm -hmm. So that's the premise. I'm a big sci-fi fan, so I'm going to be checking this out. I read all Jules Verne's stuff way back when I was younger, mm -hmm. but I remember it uh, very fondly. I, I like a lot of movie versions too, so I, I think it's cool that comics can can draw from some literature mm -hmm. here and there. So that's what's going on with that, and it only has one variant cover. It's by the team that did Sonata. Mm -hmm. If anybody read that, they did some really beautiful work, some really good art in Sonata. So next up is a. Uh, new mini series i believe it is five issues long called home from image comics um this follows a boy who kind of a family who seeks an uh, asylum in the united states but gets separated from his mother and this traumatic event triggers um some latent superpowers so it it's a little uh at least concept-wise, a little X-Men-y, where it's like a traumatic event triggers something. And it's really about like a, a immigrant story um, set through the lens of like a, a superhero story. So Image has been doing a lot of these very interesting, um, deep uh, kind of stories that um, tackle some like current events and everything, but done in a very entertaining way. So, sounds really cool. There is also a variant cover for this. Yes, yeah, so. I, I like the variant because it more hints about what the powers might be. Yeah. Because the solicitation doesn't say. I really like in comparison to X-Men. I, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't think of it that way. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's a little, uh, I don't know. It reminds me of that scene of like Magneto holding on right. and he ends up bending the gates and everything. Absolutely. All right, another one we wanted to feature this week. This is from Titan Comics, actually. It is Minky Woodcock, the girl who electrified Tesla. So you may remember this uh, character was had a miniseries before. I believe it was a uh, girl who handcuffed Houdini. So this is definitely like hard-broiled, detective, mm -hmm. pulpy time period. Uh, it's actually illustrated and written by Cynthia Von Bueller. And so it's cool that her create her own work pretty much. Uh, she's a director, a playwright, so she definitely knows how to craft mm -hmm. these stories. So like I said, it's it's if you like that detective pulpy stuff, this is going to be uh, set in a world, obviously the time period of Nikola Tesla. Uh, she meets him here, our detective, and there's there's Nazis. There's uh, the, the weapons of mass destruction. So it's it's pretty crazy. It's all over the place. There's some preview pages of this, and the coloring is really, really It's very beautiful. vibrant. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't think that with a cover that's kind of subdued like this, but it's it's pretty, uh, not trippy, but it's bright. Like Parts of it are. Yeah, hot pinks and neons and stuff. It kind of put me in, like, this prohibition time yeah. period. Um, just something. It looks very candlelit. So it, it was good, the preview pages that I read. Although I will say I believe the preview pages are out of order. Oh, or, no. <laughs> or it's showing you multiple parts in the book because it does not follow a coherent plot line. I believe they only selected some pages. Uh, so go check the preview pages out if you want to see just the style of it and, and that stuff. So here is the A cover. Then we have the Strips B cover. And then the Bueller. So I believe this is uh, Cynthia Von Bueller herself, who, like I said, wrote and illustrated this work. Uh, there are a few more covers if you want to go check those out, out on Previews World, but this is the latest mini series from her. I like it because they put that little um, thing in the top corner. Oh, yeah. That it's like this whole series of these like hard boiled crime stories that it's cool that, the, that somebody's making these, these yeah. very unique. Um, genre that you know you've got Batman the detective but I mean this is like I mean, even the logo and everything is very reminiscent of old crime exactly. novels um, dime store novels and stuff that's exactly the the vibe of this mm -hmm. so if you like that then you will probably like this very stylish mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so from Dark Horse Comics there's a new series called Jenny Zero 
right off the bat on the cover, you can kind of <laughs> tell what it's about. I think this cover says a lot uh, based on what I've read about it. She makes really wicked snow angels. <laughs> <laughs> so Jenny Zero is the superhero daughter of a beloved superheroine. Mm -hmm. So her mom was a superhero who used to fight kaiju. She passed her powers down to her daughter. Her daughter was fighting kaijus for the army. And all this happens before the story, apparently. <laughs> anyway, uh, something bad happens, and Jenny gets fired from it. She falls into depression. She becomes an alcoholic. Mm. She's just living with her hotel heiress friend, uh, just, you know, gone from her old life. The kaiju apparently are, are defeated at this point. Well, apparently, the kaiju come back, and the army goes to her and says, hey, you're the only one, you know, now your mom's gone, who can defeat them. But she's just this self-loathing drunkard. No. So she has to pull herself out of misery and pity and try to get back to being a superhero. And so, I mean, I think the cover is perfect for that. <laughs> her, she's in her pit of despair yeah. um, with the kaiju foot symbol. So that's what it's about. So I know I know there are quite a few kaiju-based mm -hmm. comics coming yeah. out right now, yeah. strangely. This has to be the third or fourth, but I like that this one has a lot to do with the character who has to fight them. Yeah. So, I mean... Well, I, I, with uh, Godzilla vs. Kong coming out, it's prime kaiju territory. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. The other cool thing is, and I know some people appreciate this, it just has one cover. Mm -hmm. This is the cover. Mm -hmm. That's it. No... Uh, variants to chase so there you have it next up is a new installment of the canto epic i don't know if any of us knew that canto would go on to become what it's become with like you know there was canto uh one and two um the series and there was in between series uh that original series blew up like crazy um so this is a new kind of in between series called Kanto in the City of Giants. This is going to be three issues long, and this is going to bridge the gap between Kanto 2 and Kanto 3, which will be coming out um, pretty soon afterwards. And this is about our hero, Kanto, um, going to this uh, land of the giants and trying to recruit them to help him fight the Shrouded Man, who's the kind of the big bad of this series. And, of course, he meets a lot of his friends along the way, um, this has been a really cool series that's uh, all ages, but not in the terms of its kitty. It's just like a really fun adventure um, fantasy story. And I love that they're, I mean, they seem really devoted to uh, keeping the story going and, and fleshing out this world. So if you've read the uh, original Kanto um, volumes, you'll definitely want to pick this up. Or... This seems like this could be a good kind of introduction, too, because it's one of these side stories. Kanto mm -hmm. is one of those heroes where he's kind of adorable, but also very courageous. <laughs> it gives me a Jim Henson sort of feel, yeah. like Labyrinth. Yeah. And I think they're they're just doing it so well. That's why it just blew up like this. And I, I know lately it's been optioned. Wow. Yes. So It should be like stop motion or something. I feel like that's really what it's primed for. Yeah, because even look at this cover. They make him, you know, and of course he's supposed to be diminutive, but he, yeah. he yeah. kind of always is, and it makes him a little bit adorable. Very charming. He always also reminds me of kind of like a Super Nintendo protagonist. Um, you know, like you had like Ness, that. and you had like Super Ghost and Goblins Night Guy and everything. Mm. Yeah, he definitely fits that. All right, guys, next we're getting it to the section where we're going to show you number twos, stuff that you uh, want to add to your poll list. We don't want you to forget about it in case you picked up the number one. The number twos are coming for you. Uh, this is Joker number two. This is the Lee Bermejo variant. I absolutely loved Joker number one. I think we all did here, mm -hmm. of course, written by James Tynan. Uh, it also has the backup punchline stories in it. And I'm going to be honest, a lot of times I don't dig the backup <laughs> stories. I, I'm buying it for the main title. That's why I'm mm -hmm. checking it out. But Joker and Punchline are going hand in hand. Um, I really enjoyed the Punchline series. She's in prison. She is having to deal with prison gangs. We're seeing her really stripped down. Her own personality is coming through because she's not wearing her costume. So that's why I think there is this punchline cover. I love the, it's like she's in one of those claw machines <laughs> with a bunch of little Joker dolls around her. So I can't recommend this series enough. 
uh, go read it. <laughs> if you haven't read your copy from last week, read it, add it to your pull list. And this is the Vermejo variant. We also have the... That, that's maybe my favorite cover of the week. Yeah, I really it's great. like that one a lot. We also have the Brian Still Freeze variant. So definitely, uh, you know, that classic Joker bringing his hands through his hair, reminiscent of uh, Killing Joke and mm -hmm. all that. So really cool look. It also reminds me of the Sean Murphy... There was a cover he did for Batman White Knight with the reflection. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, it's a cool cover to choose from this week. Or get them all. All right. Here is the variant for Wonder Woman number 771 by Joshua Middleton. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, what else do you say about that? <laughs> it is just an amazing cover. I, you know. It's so cool to see this um, now that she's kind of in the Norse mythology world. Mm -hmm. But she's still, you look at that, you're like, that's Wonder Woman. It's like, she's never worn this costume before. It, it doesn't look like her old costume, and yet they still manage to make her recognizable. Correct. And yep. look just as like strong, her. and you're like, oh yeah, she could have always been in this world. Yep. Next up, we have Superman Red and Blue number two. This is the Brian Boland cover. Um, we just had Superman Red and Blue come out, uh, number one come out this week. Um, the anthology series that kind of covers all the different things that make Superman great. Um, and they've been doing some really nice variant coverage for this, too. Yes. So this is the Bolin, and then this is the... Interesting. David Cho variant, huh. which is, I mean, I, very almost high art. Um, uh, the artist from uh, Sandman uh, that did the covers, um, Dave oh, yeah. McKean. Dave McKean, like, cause his face looks a little like, um, like layers. Like you put like a cut out of a guy's head on top of this, and uh, just the symbol is crazy. Some parts of this are like I, I love and are interesting. Other parts, it's 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 very different. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this one, but it definitely stops me. Yes. Yeah. The and hair. In I particular look I'm looking really at it cool. a lot. And it's like the his cape is it like his cape or is that just like just red ink dump mm -hmm. under his laser vision? I don't know. It's I love though that DC is comfortable enough yeah, to do stuff like this and the Harley Quinn variant exactly. and everything right. that are like this is not your standard comic book art. And that's okay. What Andy's talking about also, and we'll be showing this on a Tuesday show, with the Harley Quinn variant, is the Yoshitaka Amano, Amano cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's really cool to see them branching out. Especially with variant covers. I don't know if this would fly as well as an A cover. Yeah. But when you make it a variant where it's optional, that kind of gives you like more leeway to be a little bit more experimental yeah. in variant covers. And I think that's awesome. I hope they keep pushing this even further. I just want to see crazy crazy variants i agree it's very cool all right speaking of variants here's some more this is superman number 30 the inyuk lee cover and we got jonathan clark kent in some sort of world tunnel situation <laughs> really cool just a lot of movement and expression there so i like this one i just inyuk lee i mean a year ago i don't know if we ever said his name and you know now we have this whole new slew of artists yeah. mm -hmm. that are like pivotal artists for variants and everything. I think that's really cool. And all of his stuff now is amazing. Look, yes. how, look how grown up Jonathan Kent looks on it too. You know? Yeah. All right. So this is the cover to Batman Fortnite number two. This is the cardstock variant that shows Batman with all the crazy <laughs> kooky Fortnite things. Uh, I've actually gotten to read issue one and two already. He does fight a lot of these things. I can't say for sure I recall him fighting that banana. The banana <laughs> is in it. I, I will I will confirm because I read those two. Okay, well, he, he yeah, we, we both <laughs> we've both read them. So, you know, like this or not, it is definitely monumental. Fortnite has 350 million people who play it. Mm -hmm. So Batman on a cover with a bunch of them might interest. <laughs> A couple, couple of those of them. people. Yeah, and you see he does get this new costume in the in the comic, Correct. too. This kind of, like, patchwork version of his own costume. It's it's some of his stuff and some of the items from the game. Yeah, I think it's really so. cool. The next up we have, like I mentioned before, these are the Reborn variants, um, which take uh, some of the stuff we're going to be seeing in the new Heroes Reborn event from Marvel, 
and spotlighting a few of them before the actual series drops. So this one I'm interested in because this is the one for Black Cat, but it uh, has Agent Coulson on it, and it looks like he's some kind of political figure. Oh. You know, most of them actually have a little bit of a tie with the book that they're they're on. I'm not sure why this one's on Black Cat, but thought it was interesting. Um, so yeah, this is for Black Cat number five, and all these are, are by uh, Carlos Pacheco. I, I like that all this is coming out sort of before the Heroes Reborn, so mm -hmm. it's almost like they're giving hints as to what to expect in the plot. It's almost like like trailers or teasers or I, something. I'm building the story as we <laughs> see these. The next up, I think this is going to be the hot one because yeah, a lot of people that. have talked about this. Uh, people are picking out this character from the background. Um, so this is for Captain America 29. And this is almost, uh, I believe it's Red Skull mixed with Venom, if I'm not mistaken. That's I think that's what I'm seeing. I don't know if we know that for sure, but I think that's kind of the chatter is that's what it is. And even the skull on his chest is making the Hydra symbol where it's like the skull, the tentacles. So I think this one's really cool. And I guess this will be the first appearance of that character. Yeah, yeah. Ve Venom and Red Skull combined, that is not good for freedom anywhere. <laughs> I also love his mouth. Just looks like a big <laughs> Muppet mouth. Then we have the one for Daredevil 29. So uh, someone is in an insane asylum, the lost prisoner. Hmm. So let us know if you maybe know who that's going to be. Uh, is it Matt Murdock or is it somebody else? Yeah. Then we have the, uh, this is for Thor number 14, which this is a little bit more in line with what they say is going on with Thor. Instead of being like the big heroic god of thunder, he just drowns himself uh, in a bar and kind of dreams about, you know, what he could have been. Mm. So... This one's called The Forgotten as Guardian. That's funny because they just discovered Odin doing that very thing <laughs> in the ongoing like Thor. Like father, like son. Yeah, yeah. And then finally we have the one for Wolverine number 11. And this kind of gives you a hint. I believe this is the new Alpha Flight team. Um, and I think it's also interesting on there that Wolverine has some of the little things on him that he had when he was Weapon X. Um, the little knobs or whatever they are, and that. then uh, Weapon H had those later. So it looks like he's going to be more like that classic um, Weapon X Wolverine in this. And whoever the mysterious Doctor Strange-like character is I see that. in the background with the Don King hair. So, so Wolverine in Heroes Reborn, he just basically stayed in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just stayed in Canada. <laughs> okay. So next we have, this is the... <laughs> cover to star wars bounty hunters number 11 i wanted to check to see if this was the, the variant but apparently this, this is, is the, the a, a cover, cover which is really nice yeah this is a great a cover so this is neat if you haven't been reading bounty hunters it's a great jump on point because this is basically a one-shot story mm -hmm. in between storylines it is a bosk story so if you like that character one shot bosk story in star wars bounty hunters number 11 and here is the variant this is the empire strikes back variant they have done this for so long. I, I wonder how many more of these they're going to do. Hey, they're taking frame by frame. Eventually, I, they're going to start so. like you can do make a flip book of it and <laughs> just play the audio in the background. I'm wondering, are, these are numbered, aren't they? I believe they all have a number on I there. So right. when they get to the end, I wonder what they're going to do because they're going through the movie. They're getting really close. This is the last yeah. 15 minutes of the movie. Yeah. So we'll see what comes afterwards if they just go ahead and start on Return of the Jedi or they move on to something else. <laughs> Credit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's everyone is like, oh, yeah, we got to visual effects. This is going to take a while. All right. Well, we just complimented DC for having some, like, experimental cool covers. I, this is getting there yeah, from Marvel. Th this is neat. This is really cool. This is the Okazaki variant for Nonstop Spider-Man number two. Nonstop Spider-Man is really fun, very fast-paced. Um, it had a lot of amazing cool covers for issue number one, but we really love this variant here, so don't we didn't want you to miss it. This is the Okazaki variant, and if you liked Nonstop Spider-Man number one, make sure to add it to your list. I mean, this is highly manga-inspired. And he's not stopping. He, no. That is a Spider-Man who is full go. His yeah. foot is in front of his face, so... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I don't know how he's going to stick that way. You can't stop that. <laughs> you can't stop that. I mean, when your feet are in front of you, you're going fast. And I won't stop it. <laughs>
Next up, this is what everyone has been waiting for. This is Fantastic Four number 30. And of course, they've been doing the Man Thing inspired mm -hmm. covers. Finally, we have the Thing Thing Ooh. cover. <laughs> we, you knew it was coming. They did uh, like Miss Marvel Thing. They did, uh, oh, what were some of the other ones? Uh, like the Iron Man Thing. But finally, we have Thing Thing. And they even call it Fantastic Four Thing. It's, <laughs> because we know what we're looking at. This is by uh, Daniel Arcuna. So this is really, really cool. And you see they're all kind of made of, of mulch and, and plant life. Okay, here is the cover to Children of the Atom number two. So this released and generally had favorable reviews. Mm -hmm. It kind of To shocked, everyone's surprise. <laughs> yeah, everyone yeah. that it wasn't uh, a complete bomb. Um, I know some people still didn't like it. That's fine. You know, there's many comics to read, many different tastes. But for those of you who did like it, number two has been announced. Here's the cover. Maybe we'll get to learn who these kids are. Are they mutants? Yeah. Are they not? What's going on? And then here is the number two knock headshot cover. Got to have one of those. Yep. Especially if you're an X-Book. He did the X-Books really all early on yeah. in his headshot career. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there is uh, Cyclops Lass. Such a crazy, <laughs> these characters. Uh-huh. Yep. But just remember, and this is what I've told people who are like, oh, they're kind of ridiculous. It's like, what about Squirrel Girl? You know, when, when yeah. she appeared in Winter Special, I, I, I love the way she looks. She's so insane looking. I don't think anybody expected mm -hmm. she was going to stick around. I think she was a jokey throwaway yeah. character. You never know. I mean, it all has to do with the writing. So mm -hmm. Yeah, I always say there's no bad characters. It's just how you write them. Yep. They're just ones that are kind of sillier and harder to write to begin yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, so. Howard the Duck made into a movie, so what do you know? <laughs> An award-winning <laughs> film. It won awards in my I house. was thinking <laughs> the the post credit scene, not the, uh, not the George Lucas one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is Proctor Valley Road number two, the Wild Goose variant. So once again, Proctor Valley Road came out last week, right? Or was it? It all blurs, but I believe it was last it week. It was pretty recently. Uh, it was a really cool horror tale about a haunted stretch of road, a real haunted stretch of road in California and some kids involved in it in the 70s. So if you haven't picked it up, we still have plenty of number ones here if you need one. But this is the B cover for issue number two. And that. next up, this is so great. This is for Maria Levette's Aero Psyche mm -hmm. number two. The number one had the Harry Potter homage variant cover. Mm -hmm. And now we get this really, really nice Pulp Fiction variant cover. Uh, this is by Sabine Rich. So uh, I, I saw where like one of the big ratios is this cover without the trade dressing. I'm like, no, the trade dressing is really Adds what to it. makes right. this what it is. Mm -hmm. um, the font and the colors and everything. So really nice. Uh, a lot of people picked up the number one. If you enjoyed it, check out the number two. I'd like to add there's a She-Hulk homage that's done like this oh, yeah. a long time ago. And that is one of the Chase She-Hulk issues i mean that's one of the ones everyone goes for yeah and i mean that was so long ago you know i i think that it's fine that they're doing another homage but as as well as that one did i'm gonna probably grab homage a copy covers of do really they well really do. after you know their shelf life mm -hmm. just because i mean people always see them and recognize what movie they're doing and mm -hmm. really cool okay this is infinite frontier number zero the second print Mm -hmm. So the first print sold out. We talked a lot about on Comics from the Future. Yes. Uh, Andy and I, I remember we were saying we both read it twice. There are <laughs> so many things in this issue that set up the future of the DC Universe. And we don't mean future state. We mean the future of what's currently going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. It has a couple neat first appearances. There's first Simon Saint. Mm -hmm. There was the first uh, cameo of a lot of the, the uh, Teen Titans Academy kids mm -hmm. are in this. So it sold out in a flash. We ordered a ton of it. It just vanished. But who's on the cover? Dark Side. Yeah, and we know that there's some stuff with Dark Side coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, if you saw the solicitation for Infinite Frontier number one, it's going to be coming out in a few months. Yeah, in um, July, I believe. Yeah, he's going to be a big deal. But what also is great about this is it's actually a good read. It is. Which a lot of people came to me and they're like, I actually really enjoyed that because I feel like with these books, people kind of get the mindset of like, 
this is like I gotta read this. This mm -hmm. is gonna, you know, right. it's it's a point one issue. It's a, a it's an alpha thing. Yeah, where it's like we're not gonna get any story. We're just gonna get set up. Right. This actually, I felt like had story, especially the stuff with Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. Really is important to what's yep. going on with it Wonder is. Woman right now. Um, and I didn't think we'd sell out of this because I thought too many people would have that mindset. And we sold out of this. Yep. And we, like Jason said, we ordered a ton of it. So, and I think this um, second printing cover is awesome. I do too. If you're reading DC and you missed out on this, wherever you get your comics from, order it. It's, mm -hmm. it's a worthwhile read. Okay, this is Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. 61, the second printing variant. Another one that sold out really quickly because 61 featured the... It was really cool. It had a split uh, cameo, I guess, of the new costume. You had Spider-Man split in half, the old mm -hmm. and the new. So this one is seems to be fully featuring that new costume. And it's just trippy, weird. I'm looking at it off the screen here to get a closer look, but really cool. So if you liked 61 and you like this one as well, this is the second print. Um, so that's a Patrick Gleason cover, mm -hmm. and he's the one who's been doing the webhead covers. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's just blowing up. Yeah. Like, just just you can take see his some stuff. Webbing and... in there, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I really like this cover. There's a lot yeah, to look I at. Like it, too. it almost can be too chaotic and messy, but he pulled it off. Yeah. A lot of a lot of props to the colorist too for the, separating everything and making yeah. Spider Man the the focal point. Next we have America Chavez made in the USA number one second printing. This is another book that we completely sold out of. I think this was uh, people didn't jump on it right away. Like when we talked about it on the show and everything, we had quite a few people sign up for it, but wasn't like huge. And then it came out. And people are like, oh, yeah, I'm going to pick that up. Uh, the interior art is gorgeous. Um, this character is slowly becoming one of the new big stars at Marvel. Mm -hmm. and so thankfully they're doing the second print if you missed reading the, the first, mm -hmm. its first time around. So really nice cover, too. All right, back to Children of the Atom. So this is Children of the Atom number one second print. This cover was just released just lately, mm -hmm. so this might be one of the first places you've seen it. On the cover is one of the Children of the Atom. Her name is Gimmick. Uh, so she plays off of Gambit, obviously. I will say we're on forums for retailers, and one of the ones we're on, it's, it's run by Marvel. It is run by one of the head guys at Marvel, and he said on it, that this is a character to keep, to keep watching. Okay. So I'm really interested, you know, why is Cyclops last, the head of the team, why is she not on the number mm -hmm. one second print cover? Why is this one? So maybe she'll be the breakout character. I want to add one other thing. You know, a lot of people, not a lot, but a few people have mentioned to me, you know, hey, why have these heroes who are just analogs of the regular X-Men? You know, analog of Cyclops, and analog of Gambit. You know what? People have done that with sidekicks since early Superman, yeah. Superman, Superboy, I, I don't know why everybody's so hooked into this one is the dumb one. Yeah, when it's been going that way for ages, and I'm not saying that it's extra smart, and I'm not saying you gotta like it, but I mean you gotta it's give not, it up. It's not a new idea. It, it's not. Yeah, it's it's something that's well established, and it's okay to do as long as you can make your characters, you know, mm -hmm. worth reading. So. All right, this is not going to be for everybody, but it's really cool. I think it's, I, I hope Marvel does more of this, although I'm not actually sure how they could. <laughs> um, this is an omnibus, and it is called Marvel August 1961. So this is basically going to, it, it's trying to transport you back to August 1961 when Fantastic Four number one was released. And Marvel published way more than superhero mm. comics. They published Western, romance, comedy, monster books, sci-fi books. A lot more people, actually, I don't know, I'd love to see some actual numbers, but a lot more, I think, groups of people read comics back mm -hmm. then. There's a huge, you know, romance and love stuff. Women read a lot more comics back then. So they had a bigger catalog versus superhero stuff. So this book is, alongside reprinting Fantastic Four number one, going to reprint stuff like Journey into Mystery, Patsy Walker, the Kid Cult Outlaw stuff, Linda Carter, Rawhide Kid, uh, just the full spectrum of what they were producing at that time period to give you a feel of what it was like to be a Marvel fan mm -hmm. at that time. So, like I said, it's not going to be for everybody, but I think this is a really cool idea. Um, give some love to some of that stuff that laid the foundation for comics at that time, and uh, I, I like stuff like this. Uh, stuff, too, that 
is very hard to get just because it wasn't reprinted in any, you know, like recent editions, if ever, especially, mm -hmm. you know, Marvel's done a couple of the romance trades that collects some old stuff or the Westerns, but this is really cool. And uh, like you said, like Marvel did way more than superheroes, especially at this point, superheroes were not selling great. Um, this is long after DC had already been doing what they were doing. And this is kind of post Superman and Batman. Like you had the original characters and then, the superhero sales dropped and so they said well we're just switching back to westerns and romance and war comics and all mm -hmm. that and that's when marvel came in so it's interesting to see you know fantastic four ran alongside these other books um that were just as influential at the time yeah. we just only focus on the superhero ones yeah. a lot of the time yeah so it's giving even some love to some of that other stuff it's and a very neat idea so mm -hmm. yes this is 150 dollars. it's going to be huge <laughs> and it's going to be one of those big omnibuses and then we also have the rodriguez cover i love this with all the the uh, classic marvel monsters I see that mm -hmm. yep I think this is all supposed to have like Groot in it and all like the the monsters that have yeah. like the the weird like exclamation you see, names. You can see the genres that they're encompassing mm -hmm. with this cover. So that's going to be our uh, highlight for our graphic novels and omnibus section mm -hmm. this week. But really wanted to mention that not for everybody, but very cool for the people who would be interested. Before Kirby did superheroes, he did monsters. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I even like Patsy Walker is up there. This is pre Hellcat Patsy Walker mm -hmm. when she was just a uh, kind of an angsty teenage girl. A and, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Later turning into one of the coolest Marvel characters. Hanging out with Iron Man currently <laughs> in his series. <laughs> All right, that's our show. Thank you very much for watching with us today. Uh, let us know what you're excited about in the comments. We love talking to you guys there. And anything else you guys want to end with today? I know I learned a lot. <laughs> I hope you did too. There's a lot of great books and great covers coming out yeah. this week. I was surprised. You know, I go over my stuff, but I don't go over all your guys' stuff mm -hmm. quite as much. And I was kind of blown away by a few things that, that we saw. Yeah. So We're going to leave some info up on the screen on how you can order these books. If you don't have a local comic shop, we would love to be the ones to help you out. Just let us know. And make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you can catch our upcoming Tuesday video where... Jason and Andy review the comics that have come out that week, and then we'll see you again next Friday for the next Comics from the Future. All right. So long, everybody.